So this is our third video on higher order derivatives and in this video you're going to use the graph of the derivative and the graph of the second derivative to find inflection points and find and classify stationary and singular points. So first let's remind ourselves how the first derivative test works. If we have a function that has a stationary point at C, then that means our graph is doing something like this, or maybe it's doing something like this, or maybe it's doing something like this. But in all three of these cases, we've got a slope of zero here at x equals c. So the, this is our c in all three of these cases. And what this first derivative test tells us is if the sign of our derivative is positive on the left, and negative on the right, then we have a maximum. If the sign of our derivative is negative on the left, positive on the right, then we have a minimum. And if the sign doesn't change, maybe it's negative and negative, or positive and positive, then um, it's neither a max or a min. So let's look at the second derivative test next. So here we have our second derivative test and we have the same type of situation. We have a stationary point for our f at x equals c. So here's c, here's c, and we can see that our slope is zero in both of those situations. And this tells us if our second derivative is positive, then our graph is concave up, and this must be a min. And if our second derivative is negative, then our graph is concave down, and this must be a max. Now sometimes that second derivative is actually zero, and that might mean that we have a min. It might mean, look like that. It might mean that we have a max, or it might mean that we have an inflection point. We just can't tell from that second derivative test. Okay, so let's look at this example here where we are supposed to be finding the inflection points given the graph of the second derivative. So our graph here, this graph is of our second derivative. So remember, inflection points occur where that second derivative is zero. That means you have an inflection point. Usually you have an inflection point, not always. Um, so let's look at our graph here. And our graph is of our second derivative. So if we want the second derivative to equal zero, we are looking for where our, the y value on our graph is zero, which means we're looking for the x-intercepts. So I've got one here, and I've got a second one over here. So let's look at this pink one first. So this is at x equals 4, and that blue one is at x equals negative 2. Now we need to check to make sure that both of these actually are inflection points. And if it's an inflection point, that means our graph actually changes concavity. So we go from concave up to concave down, or the opposite. We go from concave down to concave up. So here, if we think about the second derivative, the second derivative is going to be positive, and then here it would be negative. Here it would be negative and then positive. So do you see how that second derivative changes signs? So if we look at this pink point, to the left of our pink point, to the left of x equals 4, we are positive. So here's 4. To the left, we're positive. So that means our graph of our original function f has to be concave up. And to the right, our y values here are negative. So this is the sign of the second derivative. So that means the graph of our original function is concave down. So this really is an inflection point. Let's look at the other one. So at x equals negative 2, to the left, 
our y values here are positive, so that second derivative is positive. That means our graph is concave up. And to the right, we're still positive. So again, our graph is concave up. So our graph did not change concavity, so this is not an inflection. So even though it looked like that second derivative equals zero gave us that, this inflection point, this actually is not an inflection point. Okay, so now let's look at what happens when we're given the first derivative. The graph here is of our first derivative, and this time we have to find the x-coordinates of all stationary and singular points, and then we also have to find the inflection points. Now remember, we can't find the y-coordinates, we can only find the x-coordinates. So let's look at the stationary points first. The stationary points occur where our first derivative equals zero. And remember, this is what our graph is of, so we're looking for where our y value is zero. So again, we're looking for those x-intercepts. So I have one here at negative three, and I have a second one here at positive three. Now, let's decide what those are. So let's first look at the negative three one. Let's first look at the negative three one. So to the left of negative three, our first derivative is positive. And to the right of negative three, that first derivative is negative. So if we project graph back to the original graph of f, this is going up. And if it's got a negative slope, that means it's going down. And here it's a zero slope. So this is going to be a max. Next, let's look at what's going on at x equals three. So again, I'm gonna look at the sine of f, and then I'm gonna project back to the shape of my graph. So to the left of three, we're negative. To the right of three, our, our y values here are negative again. So our original graph is going down, leveling out, going down some more. So this is neither a max nor a min. Okay, singular points. So remember, singular points occur where our f prime does not exist. And if we look at our graph here, our graph of our f prime, it, it's always, there's always a y value. So there are no singular points. Okay, so next let's look for inflection points. Now remember, the graph inflects where our function changes, our derivative changes from increasing to decreasing. So if you have an inflection point, then our, your original graph of your f prime is gonna have a max or a min. So if we look here, right here at negative one, we have one possible inflection point, and over here at this blue point, that's x equals three, we have another possible inflection point. So let's just double check that our graph actually does change concavity there. So if you recall that when our graph is concave down, your f prime is decreasing. And when the graph is concave up, our f prime is increasing. And if you think about the what's happening to the slopes, here our slopes start positive, become zero, and then become negative, so you see that the derivative is decreasing. Same thing over here, start negative, become zero, and then we become positive, so our f prime is increasing. So let's just double check that we change directions. So on our f prime, or our original actually does have a conca uh, change in concavity. So to the left of this spot here, f prime is decreasing, and to the right, f prime is increasing. So this really is an inflection point. Over here, to the left, f prime is increasing, to the right, f prime is decreasing, so that really is an inflection point. 
So let's look at one more. So here again, our graph is of f prime of x, and we are supposed to find the stationary points and the singular points and then classify them, and then also find those inflection points. So let's start with stationary points. So stationary points occur where f prime is zero. So it looks like we have one there and another possible one here. So this one is at x equals negative three and this purple one is at x equals positive three. Let's look at the negative three one first. So if we use our first derivative test, so at negative three to the left, our f prime is negative. To the right, our f prime is positive. So if we draw the original graph of f, we're going down, leveling out, going back up. So this is going to be a min. Let's look at the purple one next. I'm going to put that one up here. So at x equals positive three, we're right here. To the left, our f prime is negative. To the right, our f prime is negative. So our original graph f is going down, leveling out, going down some more. So this is neither a max nor a min. Okay, let's look for singular points. So we can tell a singular point by looking for where our f prime does not exist. And we can see that we've got this vertical asymptote here. This is where our f prime is, does not exist, and that's at x equals one. So let's check to see if that's a max, a min, or neither. So again, we're gonna use the idea of the first derivative test. So to the left of one, our y values are positive here, which is our f prime. To the right of one, our y value, which is our f prime, is negative. So my original graph is going up. The slope is undefined here, and then it goes back down. So that is a max. Okay, now let's look at inflection points. So if you recall, those inflection points occur where our f prime changes direction. So they occur where f prime has a max or a min. So over here, we don't have any max or a min. At x equals one, sometimes these uh, vertical asymptotes, these singular points end up being inflection points, but to the left we're increasing and to the right we're increasing, so that, that doesn't give us one. But this point right here at x equals three, to the left, f prime is increasing. To the right, f prime is decreasing. So we're going up to the left, we're going down to the right. So this is an inflection point. So do you see how sometimes when you have a stationary point that gets classified as neither max nor min, it turns out to be an inflection point, and that, that often happens. So that's it for this video.